Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to Just Plain Living. I'm John Gray. Good morning. I'm Peggy Burton. And I'm Jim Fuller. Nice to be here. We're going to have a great show today. I'm going to tell you why I, why, why I know this. <laughs> why? Because the dog of the week is here. Uh, he this is. Or dog of the month is here today. He is and when the right. credits started playing for this uh, for this show, he's he was looking at the TV and just got all excited. I know, and his little <laughs> tail is going to the beat. I know, it, I know it. So this is probably going to be a really good show today. It's then. a good sign, yeah. isn't it? Yeah, when the dog's like you, yeah, I think yeah. are, things are good. We've Life always is thought good. we're going to the dogs. <laughs> yeah. So, well, right. maybe that's not out. a bad Thing. No, yeah. it's not a bad thing. <laughs> not a bad thing. I used to think years ago when I died, I would like to come back as a blue tick hound <laughs> and lay under a porch or on top <laughs> of it and just hang out because they hang they, out. they they seem to have uh, they're pretty, pretty laid back, pretty good life. Yeah, and roll over and play dead once. Yeah, in a while. scratch and do. scratch yes. and lick and eat. There you go. You know, but I've decided since since Jerry Harris has become involved with us at, at Channel 6 TV and shown all these walking horses and how they're treated, I believe I've changed my mind. Yeah. <laughs> They've got it better than a blue ticket. Yeah, I believe they do, yeah. You know, I don't care what the government says, whether people talk about them being beat up or whatever. Man, they've got a good life. Yeah, well, we're not seeing those, the, the, whatever the government's talking about. We don't see those. But, no. You know, most, uh, all the ones we see are, li are living the good life. Well, yeah. they get bathed a couple times a day. They've got sure. their own swimming pool. They got a maid. You know, yeah, they've got a maid <laughs> for sure. They've got guys that rub on them and comb their comb them and wash them and clean, clean, their, clean, clean their fingernails oh, yeah. for them. Uh, <laughs> speaking of, didn't you love the... Budweiser commercial. That was a great commercial. I it cried. really was. I, mean, I yeah. think that's the most beautiful yeah. thing. Yeah, it was. That was that was a good commercial. And that was the sweetest little whore, little little Clydesdale, horse. Whatever yeah. it is, yeah. I loved it. But you, I, I also love Paul Harvey's The Farmer. You know. That was outstanding. I was I was at a place where there were a group of people, and everybody was chattering and talking and talking about this and getting food and all of that not paying attention and when Paul Harvey's voice came on the television it took about mm -hmm. 15 seconds Everybody got quiet, for the they? room to be quiet mm -hmm. nobody knew what he was talking about but the fact that his voice commanded everyone's attention that was awesome was, uh, to me was pretty amazing it was amazing then, of course what he had to say what, was what that was about commercial. was really I mean good. it was my dad it was people I grew up with yeah that was wonderful Somebody said that up in New Jersey and places like that, they didn't have a clue what he was talking about. That's their problem, isn't it? Well, <laughs> yeah, yeah. I don't think I saw that commercial. What was he talking about? Uh, just about a farmer. A farmer about a farmer. I see. And God made God. Then God made a farmer. And then God made a farmer, like uh, you know. Up in the morning the, before uh, the sun before comes up. Before dawn and work an eighty-hour week, and then needed somebody to do and, this and, and take the time to feed a dying sparrow yeah, or whatever yeah, there was, it was just beautifully done yeah, yeah it was very well done it was very beautifully well done. done talking about the clydesdales on jay leno monday night jay leno showed the clydesdale commercial that they played in france on the <laughs> super bowl in france mm -hmm. and at the end of it when the guys when the guys getting his the horse and he and instead of him going off in a budweiser truck he goes off in a mcdonald's truck and then it shows a guy in France at McDonald's eating a Clydesdale burger. Oh my goodness! <laughs> that, he, he just put that together. Yeah. Didn't he? yeah. <laughs> because they, well, they eat horse meat over there. Well, yeah, right. Exactly, right. Yeah. Right. And so it was a whole different, a whole different slant thing. on it. You know how Jay does with that that stuff. Did you see the one about the old people? You know, I might have missed it. I, I'm kind of in and out on these things. There were all these old people out of a nursing home, and it's like Friday night or something. Oh, I and, saw that. And they one, all yeah. go out and they get in this old car. <laughs> uh, you probably know what kind of car it was, Fuller. I don't remember, but it was like a big old Le Mans or something like that. A Pontiac, I think. Well, they Pontiac. All they all the get in there. They've all got their ribbons in their hair. They're out drinking and dancing. <laughs> one of them gets a gets a. They show them at the tattoo parlor. 
<laughs> they're getting tattoos, and then they end up, I think, at a McDonald's. Yeah. And they're laying on the hood and, and <laughs> walking around, and one old guy that's got that new tattoo doesn't have a shirt on. Yeah. Their teeth are laying on the dash <laughs> and stuff. And the cop drives up, and he looks, and he starts to get out of the car and just shakes his head <laughs> and, and drives on. off. <laughs> I'm not messing with that crew. <laughs> Well, on the show I watched last night, they showed, well, uh, I was watching Fox News. He showed the worst commercial. Well, I don't have a clue who it was for. It what was, did they do? Uh, just this couple kissing. And oh, it, yeah, that was. Uh, what was that? Uh, it wasn't Google, but who was it? Go Daddy. Go Daddy, Daddy yeah. Okay. Oh, that's right. <coughs> right. That's right. But it's not something that. All I can say, though, it was uh, offensive. It, it, it was was uh, generally agreed that was one of the worst commercials. But what about the guy actor who was kind of a nerd, and he got to kiss that? Yeah, he got to kiss that pretty girl. <laughs> that yeah. girl. They said it took for, like eighty takes. Yeah, or it took forever like to make it. Apparently, so you know. That's why he what was a so red cheek. Yeah. Well, the good thing I guess is y'all remember who it was for. You know. Yeah. I, I didn't catch that because I was I wasn't paying that much attention, but. It was pretty, I just didn't like it. It didn't, I wasn't impressive at all to me. Well, it didn't have much plot to it, but I mean, it got people's <laughs> attention. I, I thought, the, and this was, was uh, generally accepted, that it was one of the best ones, and that was for Best Buy, and there was some pretty blonde-headed lady, and she's an actor that every, most people that watch TV a lot wouldn't, wouldn't remember yeah. who she was. But, you know, she comes into this uh, Best Buy store, and she's, she's asking in just rapid fire, all of these questions that a lot of us would want to know, well, like what is the cloud and what is, what is this yeah. and what is this and what is this and and uh, she, but uh, I think it's a thirty-second commercial and somehow right at the end of it she asks, uh, they're trying to, she's looking at some kind of tablet, you know, or something like that, and she says, well, let read uh, uh, Fifty Shades of Grey. You, yeah. you guys are familiar. <laughs> yeah. Well, let read Fifty Shades of Grey to me in a sexy voice, and the the clerk says. No, it won't. And then she looks around and says, well, will you? <laughs> you know, <laughs> you know and, no, that's cute. Yeah. yeah. And, and, uh, I and then there awesome. was another one where he answered all these questions. And at the last thing she, and I mean, she's just blown away that he's answered all. The last thing she does is she looks at him and he said, she says, what number am I thinking of? <laughs> and he said, nine. And she said, boy, you're good. <laughs> and and it, it was the girl who used to be on Laugh-In. She was the, uh, oh. she was, she, she was with. Tina Fey hosting oh, the Fey? hosting the uh, no it's the blonde okay. she she just got the through blonde, hosting yeah. the what was Amy it Poehler. I, Amy Poehler Amy Thank Poehler you. they are so good in the, in the control yeah. room today they're back we, yeah. they're back there with their iPods staff. so they can find yeah. the answers yeah. real quick yeah I, I know but a lot of fun. people watch the Super Bowl just for the commercials a lot of people uh, do know, especially women just, they're a lot so of women curious do. as to what what they're going to think up next and the billions that are put into those commercials. Well, and one of the things that was uh, people were really worried about is that you pay $4 million for a commercial, but the contract on that has a lot of stipulations on it. And if the game's a blowout, you don't pay, it, that price goes down. Oh, it does. Because they, they figure at what, what place it it's tied to the score in some way. Because if it's a blowout at halftime, half the audience turns and watches somewhere else. And they were concerned about the, time, about the fact that there was 30 minutes of the blackout that they were losing mm -hmm. viewers. Because at that point it was a blowout. Yeah, that's right. <coughs> but then people tuned back in and of course they've got all of this stuff. I mean, they know to the second how many people are watching that game. Yeah, and a lot of people thought and Beyonce's extravaganza caused the blackout, but it didn't. It, no, uh, apparently it didn't. It, it knocked me generator. out. <laughs> well, it knocked you out, didn't it? Yeah. But I, yeah. I heard somewhere there were like 70% of people that had television turned on uh, during that time were watching at some point. Yeah. Watching the blackout. Uh, or we're watching the Super Bowl. I mean, yeah, I don't know about yeah. that. Yeah, yeah. But, but they were saying that during that time, very few people left the game. Yeah. They just, they just sat there and watched Blackout. And what interested me was that during the Blackout, I don't think they ran any of those high dollar commercials. They ran commercials for the network. Mm -hmm. Probably. Because that would have been extra plays that somebody would have gotten that they couldn't control the time frame of 
so they couldn't give somebody an extra play and not give everybody an extra play. Right. So I mean, the the people who were have all the the strategic planning on that. Are are, all are sharp the because they're making decisions just <laughs> yeah, like that. To. You know, and it, and, it, and it kind of relates to me. I can understand that because, and John will as well, because we have issues here when we have events that we have sponsors for, and one of one of these is being like election coverage. Yeah. And and we've got so many sponsors that we promise so many plays to, and and all of a sudden it becomes clear to us as we're looking at numbers here. Who's probably going to win this thing? Yeah, <laughs> but we're not sure if we should say that because we owe our sponsors uh, one more play. One, one more, more play. play. You got to do it. <laughs> so, and, so even though it's pretty clear to us, based on our, uh, to some extent, or to a large extent, yeah. we've seen these numbers for over a lot of years. It's pretty clear to us how that's probably going to come gonna out. out. But we're we're a little reluctant to say that because we owe our sponsors, yeah. you know, yeah. some sure. more time. You know. So. But Fuller and I, Fuller and I, have worked in. Christ Crisis together for years, so we're pretty good at You're making those decisions. Speak, aren't you? you know, making those decisions about what to do and when to do it and yeah. everything, because we both work better and under pressure. under pressure. Yeah, and that's yeah. got a downside to it as well, because we don't really ramp up enough. Probably in the beginning, we just figure we'll just deal with it. Yeah. When it you know, it becomes, you. If it becomes an and issue. Somehow you do. Yeah. Somehow you do. Yeah. And, and it's and it's easy for us, but it sometimes it's complicated and frustrating for those. Who have to take direction oh, yeah. from us to do what we want them to do? Yeah, you know? well, it is. It <laughs> yeah. is sometimes. You know that you sure. produce and you produce and direct right. programming. Sometimes on the fly, you've got to make a decision, make and a people decision have to figure out how to make it work. And you have to you know, live with it too. You know, I, when we started doing the telethons, the, I guess it was the second telethon we ever did. It were in the first one live. Uh, and uh, on television, it was kind of a big deal back then, I guess. You know, and I remember before, I was standing on the stage, or st standing, getting ready to go on stage to sing the opening number, which was New York, and uh, the the guys over there in the on the side that were doing all the technical work were saying, "Aren't you nervous about this? I bet you're so nervous." <laughs> and I'm thinking. Well, no, no, not really, not really. You know, a thousand you know, why would I? You know, it's, I got time to be nervous. I, I can't really visualize all these quote thousands of people that are watching on TV. All I know is these people yeah. in this room, and they're, I know most yeah, of them. Know all of them. Yeah, I know all of them. You know, yeah. so yeah, that's so. just like uh, the game the other day. They asked these players, you know, when, when to, are you nervous? And and at a certain point. It's just another ball game. Yeah, yeah. sure. You know, you get you out there, it might be the first the time you get you hit or get a slobber knocker put on you. Yeah. Then you realize, oh, yeah, this is just a ball game. <laughs> I know how to do this. Right. So, but it ended up being a good ball game. Yeah, yeah. And they almost it lost their trophy. They went and partied so hard, they lost they their lost trophy. They lost the trophy. Yeah. Oh, me. Well, we're not going to lose you, so we're going to be back right after these messages with today's Just Plain Living. Hello, I'm Frank Cole of Grace Chapel, Tullahoma, inviting you to our Genesis 2013 seminar, The Rocks Cry Out, February 21 through 23. The seminar will be taught by Stephen Armstrong of Verse by Verse Ministry of San Antonio, Texas. Stephen's study will focus on the creation story told in Genesis and the collision between Darwin's theory of evolution and the creation account. For more information on Grace Chapel, Tullahoma, Verse by Verse Ministry, and the Genesis 2013 The Rocks Cry Out Seminar, please visit our website, www.gracechapeltelehoma.com. used to look like this. But now with my paper-free office from RJ Young, it's easy. We've made all of our files electronic and stored them in our virtual filing cabinet, which gave us tons of space. And Bob here, a big promotion. Melissa can pull files in minutes and spends hours on Facebook. And Kyle's confidential uh, files stay confidential. Uh, we're not totally paper-free, right? Thank <laughs> you. 
My Paper Free Office from RJ Young. It's that easy. What's a Tennessee vacation? It starts off like any road trip. And then, boom. Adventure and thrills everywhere you look, which happens to be some of the most beautiful scenery in the country. Music here, history there, and all kinds of green in between. Come relax and unwind, or bring the crowd for some stargazing, or stargazing. Whatever you do, come hungry and expect an awesome soundtrack. It's all right here in Tennessee. We're playing your song. For a free vacation guide, visit tnvacation.com. I know you're going to want a dog after you see today's dog. I'm here with Jeremy Mitchell and the dog of the month. How you Look doing, at Peggy? This. I'm good. <laughs> this is Leon, folks. Look at that tail. It's going. He has such a happy camper. How old is he? He's about a year and a half, year uh, and a half. around there. We found him as a stray. I, can't I believe, believe on, Le somebody on Lincoln would let Street. Him go. <laughs> on Lincoln Street. Yeah. And uh, is how long have you had him? We're about uh, two weeks now. Well, there may be a chance somebody out there wants to come and claim this fella. <laughs> He's definitely a playful dog. He'd be good with a family with He'd some children. He'd be great with a family with children. Yeah, I wouldn't recommend a lot of elderly because uh, he, he could trip them up. He'd be good with somebody that uh, needs to get a lot of exercise and walk the dog oh, up and yeah. down East Lincoln Street he or wherever. Yeah, he does walk well on a lead. He's so. got beautiful coloring. It's like everything matches up. He does. Yeah, he's got a great color. And he's Do you a think he's purebred? Uh, Jack don't believe Russell? he's. No, he's not purebred. Uh, he's a little big. Yeah, he's a little, little bit long, bigger. But he's, but, uh, he's definitely got the, all the traits. Yeah. <laughs> they might have some Chihuahua on there because of his ears, but. Uh, oh, is that is that a Chihuahua trait with the ears yeah, sticking up? Yeah, the ears up? sticking up. I mean, Jack Russells also have that, but uh, I've seen a little bit of both yeah. in him. Well, people, this dog is open for adoption and that's a perfect dog for children especially oh yeah or yeah. somebody that wants to get out and walk every day yeah definitely a great dog he'll he'll make a good home for you or a good home dog sorry have y'all got a lot of dogs on hand right now uh, close to 50 right now close to 50. Mm -hmm. yeah we stay you pretty full many many different varieties yeah all different kinds of varieties so if um, you're needing a dog mm -hmm. if you need a calm dog you can find one or if you mm -hmm. need a hyper Le like Leon. Yeah, like I said, he'd be great with some children. He'd, he'd get out there yeah. and play. And and, and, and he, like he all the to... dogs that you all adopt out, <laughs> mm -hmm. he has his shots already? Oh, yeah, he's had some vaccinations. And uh, has he been neutered? Or? No, he, uh, he has not been neutered, but we will pay for a free neuter for him. You will do the free neuter yes. for him? Yeah, any dog adopted right now in the animal shelter will uh, receive a oh. free spay or neuter. Well, that's very the, nice. It's what we do it at the Middle Tennessee Spay Neuter Clinic in Shelbyville. Yeah. Um, and if you have your own dog that, or cat needs a spay or neuter, they do it at a fairly reasonable price. I believe it's based on income, though. Um, yeah. I believe dogs for a spay or neuter is forty-five dollars, and for cats, it's uh, thirty dollars. Well, it doesn't the, matter the size. The important thing is that they do need to be neutered. Because, yes, it, yeah. it it does help out. It keeps them from running off. Um, and having too many. Yeah, too having too many, many on hand. Exactly, and for females, it helps, uh, of course, you know, from getting pregnant, and also keeps from the, the messes and also keeps it from other male dogs coming to your house. Yeah. You, we get a, a lot of stray dog calls when uh, when somebody hadn't spayed their female. They'll, even the if they're- The dogs will yeah. be running off. Yeah. It is actually a law. You're supposed to keep a female that's in heat uh, inside of a house for 24 days or until she comes oh, out of heat. Oh, literally inside, inside a closed space. A closed space. It not in a fence. Uh, not in a fence. It has no. to be inside. And I, mm -hmm. I'm not sure everybody knows that. Yeah, a lot of people don't really know that. And that's really important. And, uh, if if you're interested in adopting this dog, you can go down to the shelter uh -huh. any time of day. What's the um, hours? On Monday and Saturdays from seven to three thirty. On Tuesday through Fridays from seven to five thirty. Seven to five thirty. Closed, closed on Sundays. Mm -hmm. And uh, if you really specifically want this dog, I suppose you can call and they will uh -huh. hold him, hold him till they come and get him. Yeah, we'll we'll hold him for drive time. Yeah. But I so mean, we can't hold him for five days for you. Well, but, uh, of course. But he's a beautiful dog. Yes, and he's, he's so happy. Are you a happy dog? He's a very happy Leon? dog. Leon, <laughs> I like your name. <laughs> Did you name him Jeremy? Oh uh, yes, yes, we named him. Do you ever run out of names? No, he actually. You, I mean, we probably we probably recycle them or. <laughs> you kind of look at them and think. Yeah. Well, he ought to be Leon. We try to sometimes yeah. we'll use us what street name they're picked up on and use something similar to that something, street name yeah. so I can remember where so we you got him. Where you got him. Mm -hmm. And uh, do you think you know all the dogs there at the shelter? Oh by yeah, name? definitely. I can walk up and tell you who's who. <laughs> That's awesome. Yeah. I love that. And I'll bet they love you too. Oh, yes, yes. We, we love all of our do. dogs and we treat them with, you know, really well. And we, you know, they always have food and water and they have heat for the winter and 
cool air for the and summer. And a dog is such a loyal pet. Oh yes, they make. You know, the sad thing is, regardless of how mean you are to an animal, they're still mm -hmm. loyal. Yeah, they're and still that loyal. Doesn't mean that you should be mean. I yeah. can't imagine anybody being mean to an animal. Yeah, it's we run into a lot of abusive situations. Um, we have had to pull out four arrest warrants in the past couple of weeks for oh really for animal abuse or neglect. That's mm -hmm. well, I'm glad you're on your toes for yes. things like yeah, that I because mean, we're their voice. Yeah, so. somebody has to be their voice. Yeah. All right, we need to make sure people know how to take care of their animal mm -hmm. and to feed them. Does he eat twice a day? Well, adults, it's, it's recommended for just once a day. But, uh, I mean, of day. course, if they're hungry, I mean, I'd go ahead. And there's some dogs that'll just devour all day long. But uh, they say adults once a day as long as they're healthy. And uh, puppies about three times a day. About three times mm -hmm. a day. So mm -hmm. this one would be in the once a day category mm -hmm. already? Yeah. You can just fill his bell up once and <laughs> he'd be, he should be good to go. Unless he's thin or something. I mean, you yeah. can feed him a little bit more. But he's not. He's a pretty healthy looking little dog. He looks like he's been really well taken care of there at the shelter. Yes. Y'all had him how long? Couple weeks. Couple mm -hmm. weeks. Nobody's called to and, climb And him, it so. surprises me, as healthy and happy as he appears, mm -hmm. that someone out there hasn't just jumped on the phone right now to call and say, "That's my dog. Yeah, I want Leon to it's come a, home." I mean, it's always our goal to get these dogs home. Yeah. I mean, we'll stop even if we pick a dog up. Of course, if we have some time, we'll knock a couple doors to see if a neighbor might know who it right. might belong to, and just let them know. You know, there's there's a law about keeping your dog on the leash and. Things like that, but the main the main goal is to get the dog home because it, the it's better for them. The main goal is to get the dog home. So please mm -hmm. pass the word. If you feel like you can't handle a Jack Russell, you surely know a family that would just love a dog like this. Oh yeah, Leon. It's hard for me not to take you home with me. <laughs> He's beautiful. He's a great dog. Jeremy, we could just go on and on about Leon. Thanks oh, yeah. for coming. Well, thank you for having me. And thanks for what you do for the animals <laughs> in know. Middle Tennessee. Well, I love doing my job. It. We'll be back with more of Living. Citizens Tri-County Bank has the checking, loans, savings, and traditional banking services you want. Plus free internet banking and bill pay, bank your change, Visa gift card, and lots more state-of-the-art banking services. We focus on the service and services you want. So you can bank when, where, and how you want, at our offices, or from just about anywhere. Citizens Tri-County Bank, the only community bank you'll ever need. What is Rotary? We're a network of people like you. In fact, we're the original social network. More than one million of us live just about everywhere you can think of. And we mean everywhere. We get together to exchange ideas, grow our businesses, and make new friends. We volunteer to help our own communities or someone else's. We're right around the corner. Come join us. The name is Rotary. Rotary International. You're welcome. This facility was built literally on the international dateline to bring charter customers tomorrow's technology first. Like Charter Internet, which was just made faster again. With speeds up to 100 megs, you can download a movie in two minutes. The number one internet service provider in the nation. Click. Fogelman, good luck with the presentation tomorrow. Already nailed it. Get Charter Internet Express for only $19.99 a month. All right, ladies and gentlemen, welcome back. This past weekend, an event was held, uh, which was a fundraiser for Trinity Care Center, and it is called the Diamond Studded Weekend, and it was held at Lakewood Country Club, to raise funds for Trinity Care Center. And Kitty Shukla and her group did a great job. We're gonna bring you a little video showing some of the stuff that went on out there. And this is the diamond studded evening at, Trinity, uh, at Lakewood Country Club. It's a fundraiser for Trinity Care Center. And we're gonna have a fun night tonight. There's everybody who comes get something to eat. There's, uh, there's auction items, silent auction items, live auction items. There's uh, folks coming in from all directions to, to take part in this. Uh, 
There's, there's Peggy Burton. There's Andrew Forrester. There's Miss Laura. How you doing, dear? Doing good. Yeah. Hello, hello, hello. Oh, look at these girls right here. And everyone, hey, Peg. Everyone who comes in gets to get in that little bag, that little thing right there, and pull out a sack that has a gemstone in it. And some of them are diamonds, and we will see who wins the diamonds tonight at the Diamond Studded Evening. And now we're in the room where some more auction items are, and there's all kinds of folks. Hello, hello, all kinds of folks milling around. Speak of the devil, and an angel shows up to fight him off. And uh, this is all about uh, making money for Trinity Care Center. And it'll be a fun evening tonight, and they'll be dancing and dining and diamonds. There's a diamond right there. Look yeah, at that beautiful rough. face. In the rough. And uh, here's the table that goes on down through here, full of gifts and ideas and things that people can bid on to help fundraise for Trinity Care Center. What a gorgeous bowl. My goodness. There's a good looking crew coming in right here. Look at there. There's Morning Glory. That's right. I want to ask you one thing. Are you packing tonight? Uh, you pistol not packing tonight, mama? Not tonight. I saw where you're getting you're getting a carry permit. That's good for right. you. You're gonna try to protect Marcus? Actually he's a lot better shot than I am. <laughs> Have That's a good, good chance. <laughs> Have a good evening, folks. Okay, we go two seventy five, two seventy five, we do we're here to go two seventy five. Now three hundred dollar, three hundred dollar bid. Give me three, able to go three, able to go three hundred dollar bid. Give me three, able to go three. I'm a carry. At two fifty, now two seventy five, two seventy five dollar bid. Two sixty, now seventy. Two sixty, now seventy. Now eighty, eighty dollar bid. All right, here comes that big screen TV back here. Let's see who it's going to. All right, lot number nine. See who it's going to. Is a golf print donated yeah, there it by is. Dr. There's Andrew Andy Barster Shuttle. right there with his brand new <laughs> TV head for Trinity Andy Care Barter Center. The Masters. We have to go 150 anyway. We have to go $150. Give it up at the have to go 150 125 with you, Steve. 150 anyway. We have to go 150 yeah. dollar bid. 75 175 a dollar bid. Give it up at the have to go 175 175 175 175 We have to go 175 175 right there. Now 200 Two hundred dollar bid, give it a yeah. two and a quarter. Two twenty five, ma'am. Two twenty five. Anyway, have to go. That beautiful bow. Beautiful, beautiful girl with a beautiful bow. Turn it around. <laughs> Peggy, here's Peggy Burton. She won the raffle tonight. She won that beautiful. Let me get a close up on that. That Wait, beautiful. let me move that. There you go. There it is, right there. That beautiful black <laughs> diamond ring right there. Peggy Burton. What a great That's awesome. Thing. Amazing. That's beautiful. There you go. Beautiful ring for a beautiful girl. Thanks, <laughs> John. Sandy and Kitty. Ripping the light, fantastic. It's the end of the evening. I'm standing here with Miss Kitty Shukla. Right, well, and what was the night like tonight, Kitty? Oh, it was wonderful. People were here to celebrate and showed a lot of support and commitment by being here. It was a great night, a lot of excitement, a lot of energy in the evening. Okay, and what about the numbers tonight? 
and numbers were very good. Quickly, after the expense, uh, hair center made twenty thousand five hundred and something. After expenses, after twenty thousand five hundred dollars. Kitty, yes, that's wonderful. Congratulations. Thank you. Thank you. And we have had the maximum number of supporters as sponsors this year too. We have topped that from every other year. All right. So it's been a wonderful evening and a lot of support and a lot of energy. All right. Good luck, my dear. And thank you thank so much. Thank you. Okay. This is J.D. Oliver here at the Smokehouse on Mont Eagle Mountain. My sisters Betsy, Nancy, and I'd like to thank you for supporting our family business for over 50 years. Hello, this is Stella Parton, and I am standing here right in the middle of Jim Oliver's Smokehouse Restaurant. But you need to come in here. We just got through doing a show. We also have a music scene going on here, and I want to invite you to come down because it is your mountain destination. Music on the mountain in Mont Eagle, Tennessee. My name's Betsy Oliver. I'm the kitchen manager here. We serve a lot of ribs and barbecue and fried chicken. Hey, this is Sean Mayer, and I just want to let everybody know to stop in at the Smokehouse if you're ever on your way to Chattanooga or Nashville. They not only have a great gift shop, awesome food, great entertainment on Saturday nights, but beautiful cabins to stay in. Check it out. Make the Smokehouse your mountain getaway destination. Stay in one of our 84 lodge rooms and 20 timber frame log cabins. Look around our trading posts and eat in our delicious restaurant. Enjoy music on the mountain every Saturday night featuring the best of Nashville. Our family hopes to see you this year at Jim Oliver Smokehouse. Hi, Grandma. It's Jake. I'm, I'm calling to tell you, you I love you more than anything in the whole wide world, even ice cream. I love you more than spaghetti and meatballs. I love you more than snakes and monkeys and sharks mm -hmm. and whales and prey mantises. Uh, bye, Grandma. Love you. Let it all in with Charter Phone, including unlimited local and long-distance calls. Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen, and we're pleased to have joining us on the set now. A gentleman who I actually have known only about five minutes, but I think this is going to be quite interesting because I've been interested in everything he's had to say in the five minutes that I've, that I've known him. I'm pleased to have joining us today Charles Luna, who is a local Tullahoma resident, uh, has quite a story to tell because he's, he's actually a cancer survivor and I understand is doing quite well right now. Uh, but he's also an author and uh, he's... Uh, I think released, had a book signing just this last weekend and is in the middle of writing another book at this time. But first of all, tell us a little bit about you. you one of the interesting things of, that you told me, I didn't know who your parents were, and I bet, but tell us our audience who your parents are because I bet they're going to know them. My parents are Bill and Ruby Luna. Um, they've lived here for 50 years and continue to live here. Uh -huh. I grew up in this town and actually went away for 20 years and moved back uh, within the last couple of years so and another interesting thing he mentioned was when he when he was a child well, tell us where you lived when you were a child my first home as a baby was the third floor of <laughs> Dave Culbertson funeral home my dad was a mortician and he actually started the ambulance service here in Coffee County uh-huh exactly in that when you were a kid were you ever exposed to your dad actually doing what he did, uh, embalming people and that sort of thing? Not really. Um, most of my childhood, he was more on the ambulance service side of it. Mm -hmm. uh, when we started, when he started, and my first memory of the ambulance service was they were in a trailer. Um, they had a trailer in Tullahoma and a trailer in Manchester. And uh -huh. Toward the end of his career was when they built the current um, buildings that they stationed in today. We were, we were talking bef before we came on the air that about uh, if you folks remember you or, or may not remember but before there was an ambulance service what happened when there was a wreck? Well actually the the ambulances were also serving as uh, Hertz's. Yeah. And one of our, the first cars that we had was a, an ambulance that um, was also a Hertz and um, I had just gotten too old to keep, so it was our car, and I can remember asking my dad to turn the siren on when I was 
<laughs> little kid. So. Oh my goodness, how interesting! But 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 there was a time right here in Tullahoma where there were no trained medical personnel uh, that came to rescue you if you had a serious accident. Or wow, anything. it's um, it's come a long way for sure. You you mentioned you moved away from Tullahoma for about twenty years. What were you doing at that point? I um, luckily. Just great timing, got a, a sales job with Worth Sports. Mm -hmm. We were based out of here for the first 10 years of my career with Worth. And uh, it was great for me because I've always loved sports, played baseball and basketball here in Tullahoma in the school systems, and um, really enjoyed baseball in particular. And, and got a chance to move out to Texas and work for Worth Sports. and. Then an opportunity to get closer to home in Georgia. Mm -hmm. And we spent about 10 years there. And um, then after getting sick, we moved back here. And it's good to reunite with a lot of people that, that I grew up with. You, you had quite a battle with cancer, which I guess interrupted your career, both as an author and, and uh, doing what you did for work. Yes, it was uh, 2009, and I was the guy that was invincible in my mind. I, I never thought I would get sick and traveled all around the country, and uh, it just hit me like a ton of bricks, and it was stage four brain cancer. And I guess if I have one message to deliver today is if you or anyone in your family is ever really sick and have all the efforts in your local area have been exhausted, MD Anderson in Houston, Texas saved my life. They're all cancer all the time. and That's what they specialize in? Yes, the only cancer. People come from all over the world. There was actually a, a prince from another country there at the time when, when I was being treated. And so you went through the traditional uh, treatments in the area you live. Did you live in Tullahoma at that time? I didn't. I lived in Georgia mm -hmm. and had a a first brain surgery in Atlanta and they couldn't do anything else for me. They got about half of the tumor and they suggested going to MD Anderson and, and it was a great decision. That's why I'm here. Uh, that, that, that's just absolutely unbelievable. And so uh, at MD Anderson, I guess because they specialize in cancer and that's all they do, they're, they're obviously very much more advanced than the traditional type treatment facilities. It's a it's a very international community there. Mm -hmm. They have doctors from all over the world. And um, when you go there, and I had to stay there for a couple months, but you get the feeling that cancer will be um, gone in, in, in our lifetime. Maybe in the next 20 years, they're so far advanced in, in what they're doing there. Let's talk a little bit about your, about your book and, and your career as an author. Uh, you've written one book, I believe, and you're in the process of writing another one. Tell us a little bit about what your book's about. Well, the, my first book was called The Ticket, um, and I um, published it in 2009, and then recently, um, I have a new book called The New World Project. Mm -hmm. It's a, both books are thriller suspense novels and um, page turners, I guess you'd say. Um, I, I like to take an ordinary person, put them in crazy circumstances and just let the book write itself from there. And uh, what, your first book was called The Ticket. Mm -hmm. Tell us a little bit about what that was about. The Ticket was about a, a guy that lost his job and his wife all in the course of two days and he made a decision I'm just gonna go for it I'm gonna place all my money that I have on the worst team in baseball I'm gonna place a bet on them to win the World Series and it was all or nothing and the book makes him um, travel through the country as as the casino where he placed the bet was owned by the mafia and they weren't too happy about what he did. Uh -huh. um, he comes up with a plan to make the team good again um, and that's the basis of a book that has him traveling all throughout the world trying to elude these people that are after him. Um, the New World Project, which is the book that I just published, 
um, is also uh, just a kid from Georgia Tech that spent his career, he was a little more serious than most college kids. He developed this transportation system that moved goods and people around the world without the use of gasoline. And some very, very important people didn't ever want to see that happen. Mm -hmm. So in the same token as the ticket, he spends several weeks going throughout the South East on the run trying to figure out who is exactly after him and and when it's all revealed it's um, pretty shocking conspiracies okay and that book is uh, is also out now so you it can, is you can purchase that now you also told me an interesting tidbit about this last book about how it was interrupted tell us share that with our audience actually the first draft was written uh, before I got sick and um, in the last i say six or eight months, I've gotten to a point where I could actually focus on it and write it. And I went back and read that novel and I was stunned at how relevant it is to today's uh, economic situation. Absolutely, yeah. And um, so I, I redid it again, tweaked the, the basis of the book is exactly the same, changed a few dates, fixed a few typos and, and published it. Uh, that, you know, and that's phenomenal and it's it's quite relevant today because we're, even today we're looking at gas prices that are that, that are that are just going out the roof again one, once again. That's just unbelievable and I know you, you had a book signing this past weekend here in Tullahoma. I did. It was at the Tullahoma Fine Arts Center and I had not been there in 20 years and Annie Rohn, the director uh -huh. there, has done a phenomenal job. It's really one of the, the true treasures of our city and it is uh just perfect yeah, lots of space and um i just thank them for letting me do that it was their first book signing and and and, and right now you, you you kind of have conquered both worlds i mean you've, you've beaten cancer at least for right now and 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 you've and you just uh, published this book you got to feel good about that i do it's um you know I, I'm not as uh, quick-witted as I used to be, uh, get tired easy, but all in all, I mean, I, I battled and battled and battled to raise my two boys. I've got a 13-year-old at East and a 10-year-old at Robert E. Lee, and uh -huh. um, it's, it's great to be here to try to turn them into young men that they, they can be. As, you know, quite a, quite a story, Charles. And if if uh, someone were interested in, in in purchasing your book, I'm sure they're uh, with the story you got to tell. There's a lot of uh, people that will be, and plus the topics of the books are quite interesting as well. Where where can they purchase those books? If you go to www.lunanovels, that's one word. Mm -hmm. dot com. Um, if you don't want a signed copy, you can order the book. It'll take you cl uh, one click. Um, and it says purchase here on Amazon. Uh -huh. You can click it there. If if you live in the area and want a signed copy, you can also on that website. There's a thing called contact us, uh -huh. and it has my number and email, and I'll be happy to, to mail it out to you. All right, great. And are there other books in the works? You more I ideas? Do. There, there's a a book that I'm really in the middle of. Um, called the ultimate challenge and hopefully within within six or eight months um, I'll be publishing it okay sounds great and there you're seeing on your screen there the uh, uh, the address in case you'd like to purchase that book and it sounds like it'd be a great one thank you so much thank you for coming appreciate by today. It. I really appreciate the opportunity to meet you what, what a story Thank For goodness you. sakes, thank you. Folks, we'll be right back in just a moment, right after these messages. Serving you as a local firefighter. Proudly served our country in the United States Air Force. Serving Tullahoma. Helping our kids. Hi, I'm Terry Stroop. Your comfort is our service. We'd like to thank Tullahoma for the privilege of serving your heating and cooling needs.
How can toys like these lead to a six-year-old's death and leave another child permanently brain damaged? Because they're not toys at all. A safety message from your local fire department and this station. Oh, there's my cat. I, should I put her away? <laughs> Lighten it up a little bit. How's this? Great. Good. There we go. <laughs> something healthy, commune with nature, get outdoors and meet new people. We have the perfect solution. Come hike with us. You can find a Tennessee Trails Association chapter near you, including Clarksville, Columbia Franklin, Cove Lake, Highland Rim, Jackson, Knoxville, Oak Ridge, Martin Weekly, Memphis, Murfreesboro, Nashville, Plateau at Crossville, Rugby in the Big South Fork, and Upper Cumberland. We're on the web at TennesseeTrails.org. It's fun, it's stress-free, and it's good for you. See you on the trails. All right, ladies and gentlemen, last Friday night was basketball homecoming at uh, Tullahoma High School, and it was a great opportunity for Project Graduation to have a fundraiser. It was their chili supper. I think this is the second one they've done, and it is a way to raise money for Project Graduation. A safe night on graduation night for all the young people who graduate to keep them off the roads and keep them out of harm's way. And we're going to bring you a little bit of video and show you the chili supper for Project Graduation. All right, folks, I'm at Tullahoma High School. It is basketball homecoming night, and this is the night that they have chosen to have the Project Graduation fundraiser. It's a chili supper and a silent auction, and uh, it's going to be a great night tonight. A lot of folks here eating chili already, and we're going to get some film of, of uh, everybody, and hopefully we'll find out from the Project Graduation fundraising group, which look at them right here. Look at these beautiful smiles. Look at there. Look at all those smiles. Good evening. Good evening. What in the world is that? Is that the, the next project graduation? This is, this is our next quarterback. This is the next quarterback yes, right here. All right. Good job. Here's some of the folks who have come to enjoy this uh, this chili supper here at the high school. And it's a it's a project graduation project. And look at there. Look at those look at those fine folks right there. Good evening. Good evening, everybody. Very good. How are you, friend? Good to see you. That chili any good? It's delicious. On a, on an old cold winter night. They got four good. different kinds. All right. All good. All good. Very good. Are you the directors here? No, we no. Well, we just directed directed the traffic right, right here. We're gonna go into the cafeteria and. And look and see at the different different types of chilies and desserts and all the good things that are here. Look at those desserts right there. That yeah. won't put a smile on your face, I'll guarantee you. Yeah. Right, we're looking down the line here, some of these folks coming in. And there's look at all the different kinds of chili we've got here. I mean there's every kind in the world. Some has corn in it. Some looks like a stew. It's a fine, fine looking stuff here at Tullahoma High School. It's a project graduation fundraiser. You have to have all the stuff that goes along with it, the cheese and the crackers, sour cream, all that good stuff like that. Here's one of our youngest Wildcat fans right here. And I don't know whether he's having chili yet, but I'll bet you one day he will. <laughs> Look at that smile. As always, our Mayor Lane Curley, everywhere there's a function going on, he finds a way to make it. I have two lovely ladies here tonight that are part of the Project Graduation team because they both have seniors this year. And girls, uh, this is the second annual? At least that we know of. <laughs> the chili, chili Supper fundraiser for Project Graduation and things seem to be going pretty good tonight? So far, so good. People, people are in. Uh, of course, gra Project Graduation takes place on graduation night and that is the end of the year and we're in February right now. Do you have some other 
plans for other fundraisers between now and then? Oh, yeah. Yes, Lots. we definitely have the Gold Canyon fundraiser going on right now, and we have a senior sign fundraiser, and we just closed the Turvis Tumblr fundraiser. All right, so you think everything, you think you're going to have the funds you need to have fun that night? <laughs> We're hoping so. <laughs> but yeah. all the funds can definitely help. Any donations are greatly appreciated. Okay, and if someone wanted to contribute right now, how would who would they get in touch with? Um, they could contact the Telehoma High School with uh, in the office. Rhonda Melville could tell them where to go. Tell them. The right <laughs> <laughs> Miss Melville will tell them where to go. She can uh, the right direction. direction. <laughs> okay. Well, well, girls, thank you very much for your time today. Night. And thank you for the hard work you do for the young people in the Telehoma school system. Thank you. Thank you. Mark. Mark, you've won just about everything there is to win in racing. What's next? I'd like more people to know about ER Extra. The emergency room at Harton Regional Medical Center? I just want them to get the best care they can get. That just gets me right here, Mark. <laughs> Maybe you'd like to pay him a visit. <laughs> ER Extra at Harton Regional Medical Center. ER Extra. Extra fast, extra easy, extra great. Get your news first, fast, and free with your News Leader on 6 every Tuesday, Thursday, and Saturday nights at 6, 8, and 10 p.m. Local weather, sports, community calendar events, and a comprehensive look at the latest news stories and newsmakers as only a video news broadcast can do. Get it first, fast, and free with News Leader on Channel 6, your local information network. When you see the sign, The Main Event, take a close look inside at a hair studio that offers services by some of the best master stylists in Middle Tennessee. These stylists offer a list of services that compete with large city salons, from trendy cuts for men, women, and children, to the latest color techniques, including highlights and bold color accents. Other services offered include permanent hair weaving and relaxing to formal hairstyle for that special occasion. You can also give yourself a very special treat with a full makeover including full body waxing. For your convenience, we are open Monday through Saturday from 9 a.m. until the last client leaves happy. Call and make your appointment at 931-571-8682 or stop by our Telehoma location at 207 North Jackson Street. Pay for yourself at the main event today. How long has it been since you raced a cheetah? Are your tornado creating skills getting rusty? Tired of being the only one in your neighborhood who hasn't built a dinosaur? Sounds like it's time to visit the Hands-On Science Center. The Hands-On Science Center is an indoor science playground. In this museum, please touch is the rule. Join us for weekly science demonstrations on space, lasers, lizards, rocks, and a whole lot more. No two visits are ever the same, so visit often to see our ever-changing exhibits and demonstrations. The Hands-On Science Center, 101 Mitchell Boulevard in Tullahoma. I love you. You're perfect. Now change. <laughs> I love it. You people have tuned in at just the right time because I'm here with Community Playhouse members that are doing just that, the play. <laughs> I love you. You're perfect. Now change. Now I know there's a big story here, but this opens on the 15th mm -hmm. of this month. It's nice for the Valentine it opening. Is. That's right. And, uh, Very appropriate. Tell me a little bit about your character, if you can, or what the play is about. We'll start with you. Oh, I should introduce you, shouldn't I? Yeah. This is Jenny Kubitz, yes. Eric Anders Peterson, and Erica Wonder, and they're all three involved in this wonderful musical production. Tell me yes. a little bit about it. Well, my character is, is the middle-aged couple. I'm with Jacob Gray in the play. And um, we're, we talk a little bit about, um, well, actually the songs are about uh, couples and the things they go through, like they're married and, and, and they're gonna, their romantic life and that kind of thing. Um, let's see, another thing I do is there is a, um, uh, I'm a bridesmaid. Oh, and good. I talk about being a bridesmaid <laughs> and never a bride. And the different dresses and things that go on, different things that happen um, in, uh, in the wedding. And let's see. I have a monologue. Lots of interesting uh, yeah, it's a, it's situations, little, isn't it? Yeah. 
and I have to warn you, this is PG-13. It's it's kind of adult material, isn't it? Yes. But it would be lost on the it kids. It would be lost really, on yeah. kids, yeah. yeah. Tell That's me a little bit about your character, Eric. Well, uh, Erica and I play opposite each other as a couple, and like Jenny said, there's none of us have defined characters. There's The show is made up of a bunch of little vignettes that kind of show an overall story arc to the typical modern dating world. Um, so I start out as someone who's preparing for a first date, uh, and I go from that to playing a very schmarmy aeronautical engineer <laughs> to, <laughs> to playing uh, someone who's getting married for the first time, to being a brand, brand new father, to someone who's getting into the rhythm of being married and uh, is stuck in the shoe department of Macy's. <laughs> and, so I play very various different roles, but um, I guess we would typically play the the younger, older kind couple, the, the, the you yeah. know not mid, the teenagers, mid not the yeah, yeah, the, yeah, yeah the exactly, sort of second second newlywed success. couple. Yeah. I guess it's like, yeah, yeah, overall. Are you having fun doing this? Oh yeah, yeah it's loads of fun. Yeah. It's it is really fun. Interesting music, and I know this is not an old play. This was written in the late nineties, so it's mm -hmm. a little bit. Quite modern, actually, I yes. think. And oh, yeah. I, and I the think music. there's, I haven't seen it. I don't know a lot about it except what I've read in the paper. But uh, tell me about uh, what you like best about this play. Anything in particular? Ooh, Just I, I think no matter what stage of life or relationships you're in, you can relate to somebody in this show. Absolutely. So you're going to yes. find somebody. Absolutely. We, we represent, to. you know, the awkward little dating couple that, that can't quite yeah. mesh. Um, we represent the girls that, you know, are just about done with men because <laughs> yeah. we've dated everybody out there that is single and, you know, just can't find a man. Um, you know, I, I get to play a girl that a guy actually calls her back. Oh, okay. <laughs> and I get to, you know, it's very, so I mean, there, there's a And there's an everybody. older couple in here. There is an older couple. There is. There is. Um, there is. They, they play um, a mom and a dad in the car driving along. Cute. You know, how there's, they, they the don't back. fight in the house, but they only so fight sort on the of like road. sort of spring, yeah. summer, winter, and fall of life, is yeah. it? Yeah. So yeah. It's, it's a bit like that. There's a moment and, uh, for everybody. A moment for everybody, and anybody that's been married or, or not can relate to yeah. this. And there's, yeah. there's music for everybody, too. I mean, the musical score is very diverse. There's mm -hmm. opera, there's modern jazz, there's blues. There's country. I mean, yeah, yeah, my there's little bridesmaid song is a yeah. country is it song. A little country song. Uh, yes. Uh, mm -hmm. the tickets are fifteen dollars, and seniors are thirteen. I'll never, for the life of me, understand why seniors get a break. But either way, <laughs> they do. Anyway, and since it's not necessarily for children, there's not a student price. And to get a ticket, I wrote that number down. I'm afraid of. It's I'll nine three one five eight one seven seven six seven. Good for you. Seven seven six seven. If we could put that on the screen, it would be nice. It's, it's you can also go to www.communityplayhouse. <laughs> is it com or org? Org. Dot org. And I think you get tickets online. Yeah, just click the buy yeah. tickets button. You can pick your seats. You can pick your show. You've got six to choose from. We run next weekend, which is the 15th, 16th, and 17th of February. And, the following and then weekend. the following weekend, which is the 22nd, mm -hmm. 23rd, and, you and 24th. You can print out your ticket and you don't Absolutely. have to wait in line. And That's it's, right. so. it's done when it's you get there. Very convenient nowadays. It is very convenient. And I'm so proud of the Community Playhouse for for doing this because yeah. I know they've been doing it in Manchester. and. Uh, Oh, yeah, now we're yeah, the online, the online ticketing. Ticketing, our, our playhouse yeah. is catching up. Yes. Right. And yeah. I understand, Jenny, that you're going to be the lead in South Pacific, which is coming up. Yes. Yes, I am. And when's that That's going to be starting April 5th, the weekend of April 5th, and the weekend after that. I believe that's the 12th. And, and you're playing weekend. Miss Nellie. Nellie that's, Forbush. That's yes. the lead opposite yes. Tony Graham, who is... Emil. 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 He's going to play and, the Emil uh, part. It's mm -hmm. been a while since I've seen that. I helped direct it once upon a time, and it was fun, too. And I think it's going to have kind of a new twist to it. It is. With Peggy's direct... Not me, Peggy, but Peggy. The other Peggy. The other Peggy. Peggy, Peggy, Peggy. Hayden. Hayden. We'll be and, directing uh, it. she yes. does a great job. Yes. Who's directing this play? This one is um, Heather Kleinfeld. Heather, yeah. Heather. Heather Kleinfeld. Yeah. I think this is her debut in directing. I think so. that yeah. this is her first show, and, and she's done a great job. I know yeah. she's a marvelous worker she and is. organizer, yes. and, and I have organized. the feeling that she's jumped in there and done a great job directing. She has. We've is had she, a really, she really good assistant? time. Is an assistant? Is anyone helping her? Cynthia. Cynthia Reddick. Reddick Reddick is her stage yeah. manager. Is a stage manager, stage manager, and also Tim is. I forgot Tim. Tech. 
Yeah. We have a, we have a production crew that all kind of they just kind of do what's needed. We yeah, don't, they don't really, they don't really stick to their, yeah. the, the traditional roles of you know stage manager, lighting. Right. You know, they just get in there and get it done. Exactly. Yes. Right. Uh, is this in any particular period of time? It's it's set in modern times. Just I now, mean, today. the show, like right. you said, the show aired on off Broadway in 1996, and it was written to be completely modern. Right. Yes. Right. Um, I mean, the scene that she said where the guy actually calls her back, she has a cell phone. <laughs> uh, it's very modern. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It's fun. <laughs> yeah. I think it's fun to know that we're seeing something a little newer. Yes. And uh, I, I'm glad that you've the Playhouse has stepped out on a limb and come up with a, a little risque subject. <laughs> and I think it's going to be great fun. And uh, how often do y'all have to practice to pull this off? Well, we've been practicing, what, three nights a week for three nights a week since for the past, December, I guess? Yeah, for the past yeah. two months. Yeah. We've got a good break for Christmas. And, and who's yeah. doing the music? Who's the music? Todd. Oh, uh, Todd Nichols. Todd Nichols. Todd Nichols. Todd Nichols. Nichols. And then yeah. Vicki, of course, and is playing the piano. Yeah. And then yeah. Cindy, and I'm Cindy sure Jolly. You have an awesome is doing yeah, a violin. It's just, it's just, it's just two. two. Piano just two. and violin. Piano and violin. So we have Cindy and Vicki, and that's And it. that's probably <laughs> enough for this, this type it works of production. Really it is. It works very yeah. well. And they, they're doing such a great job. Oh, my it's, gosh. I mean, they're the, so talented. Just when you open the door and know they're there, you know, well, okay, the music's taken care of. They are wonderful. Yes. They really are. Yeah. And uh, I know there's going to be another thing happening maybe toward the end of May or June, but it's a big secret, so watch for that. <laughs> oh, a special it event. That's sounds right. like it's going right, to be yes. a special event that's going to be extremely special, but we won't talk about that today. Oh. <laughs> I just thought I'd mm -hmm. throw that out throw there. Throw that out there. If you haven't got a ticket yet, uh, you need to call. The number's on the screen now, no reason that you can't call. But again, I encourage you to go to the website, www communityplayhouse.org and get your tickets online. And remember they're fifteen dollars and thirteen for seniors. So I get a deal, but I've got a season ticket. If you're a season ticket holder, it's a yep. real deal. Yes. Oh, I yeah. encourage people to buy season tickets. Mm -hmm. You know, even if you have to miss a play you never pay as much as you do if you pay at the door. Oh right? definitely. So it's definitely. always, always the community playhouse has grown quite a bit lately. And uh, Erica, I know that you've done some wonderful productions with Pact, and uh, I know that you and Eric, that's cute, Eric and Erica, yeah. <laughs> yeah. are going to be in Les Mis. That's right. That's uh, right. Cumberland you want to tell me when that's open? Cumberland when County Playhouse is basically rehearsing it the month of February, and we open in March, and we run for two months. Yep. We open so if you want to come see us in Cumberland <laughs> County, you have 33 right. opportunities to do so. <laughs> oh, okay. opportunities. It spans from March so, 9th to May 3rd. Well, so. it'll be a big success, you know, oh. with the movie coming out and yes, all and I'm the very hype excited. on that. Um, Nathaniel, what are you playing? Uh, we are both ensemble soloists. So so okay. I'm playing um, one of the convicts in the chain gang. I'm yeah. playing the farmer in the scene that follows that immediately. I'm one of the sailors in the dock scenes. I'm one of the people in the streets of Paris. I mean, both of us are so just kind of doing what they're told, multiple. doing what we're told. Um, but what's really exciting for me is that Nathaniel Hackman, who just came off of the Les Mis US tour that uh, went through TPAC not too long ago, will be, will be playing our Valjean. Oh wow! So, so we get to work. Oh my we get to work gosh. with him, which is very <laughs> exciting. That's huge. Mm -hmm. That's huge. Yeah. And, and I get to understudy Cosette. So hopefully, him? They, I don't know. That, you know, that's amazing. Yeah, I don't know, but I'm very excited that they well, did. Well, sure you are. <laughs> well, I'm excited about. I love you. You're perfect now. That's change, right. and yes. I think Should that there's probably, probably show the poster, yeah. Let's you know. show the poster. It's fine. I was going to say I really do like the Can we show this poster, Miss Julia? This is a great poster. And it, it's it's a there nice Valentine gift. That's right. Remember that it opens on the 15th. It goes 15, 16, 17, 22, 23, 24, and the matinees are at two o'clock on Sundays. Mm -hmm. That's right. And the other shows are 7:30. Correct. Yes, and there's correct. usually an intermission and concessions and right. all that good stuff. And all that good stuff. <laughs> and uh, I know that the Community Playhouse is always looking for new members, and so you all meet. And I am a member, but I don't always meet because I'm tied up in other things and I'm old. <laughs> On Tuesday nights, is the, do y'all know when the meetings are? I don't remember are? which Tuesday it is. No, Rosie, which either. Tuesday do you meet? Rosie's in the audience. Tuesday. Tuesday. Which Tuesdays? We, the first Your Tuesday? Tuesday? First the, Tuesday? Oh, first, uh, no, it's the last Tuesday. Last, last Tuesday, Tuesday of the month. Oh, sorry. Okay. <laughs> okay. <laughs> last if Tuesday you want to become a member of Community Playhouse, the last Tuesday of each month, 
six thirty, I believe, is the community playhouse meeting, and it's at South Jackson Civic Center. And uh, all you have to do is just show up, and you can become a member. It's very inexpensive, five dollars yeah, for right. a membership. Right. I mean, that's the best deal in town. And uh, I want to encourage you to go see this wonderful play. Jeannie, by the way, is a great nurse. These two are substitute teachers. So how lucky are the kids in the school system? <laughs> <laughs> anyway, <laughs> you're all perfect. I love you all, and but do change. We'll be back with more of Tullahoma Living. So this was a big weekend for Tullahoma High School sports. Uh, both of the uh, basketball teams, the girls team is having one of the best seasons they've had in a number of years now with over 10 wins. And the uh, boys basketball team is 8-0 in district play. So it's been a big, uh, big uh, season for the uh, Tullahoma High School basketball teams. And this week was very special because it was homecoming. And we've got some video of the Tullahoma High School basketball homecoming, I think, that was shot by our, our good buddy and one of our producers, Bob Payne. Let's watch that video now. Hey, student body vice president. Hillary Huffer, student body secretary.
Okay. Alexis will now be crowned by Junior President Dean, Dean Blanks. Her flowers will be presented by Vice President Dustin Tolson and Junior Class Secretary Kayla Vance. Alexis's sash and pen will be Treasurer Morgan Rutan Woods. Senior honorees tonight is Miss Anne Marie Lawson and Mr. James Michael Ship. Miss Anne Marie Lawson is the daughter of Jim and Leslie Lawson. Anne Marie is the band captain, member of both of the varsity tennis teams and the science club. Anne Marie plans on attending the University of Tennessee at Knoxville. Mr. James Michael Ship is the senior escort tonight. He is the son of Michael and Stacy Ship, and is also a member of the National Honor Society, Mu Alpha Theta, and National English Honor Society. Michael is also a member of the varsity baseball team. He intends on to, intends on to attend University of Tennessee at Knoxville and major in chemical engineering. Emory will be crowned by senior class president Nicola Maddie. Our flowers are presented by senior class vice president Clay Daniel and class secretary. Our pen and sash are presented by Treasurer Eric Nilius and co-historians Devin Bryce and Hollis Buell. Congratulations to Emory and Michael. And now, for your 2013 Basketball Homecoming Royal Couple, the Tullahoma High School Homecoming Queen, Miss Emma Lepper, and Homecoming King, Mr. Tyler Fishback. Miss Emma Lepper is is a member of FBLA and enjoys horseback riding, playing guitar, and spending time with her friends, family, and dogs. Her plans for the future include attending the University of Tennessee at Knoxville and majoring in academy. The homecoming king, Mr. Tyler Fishback, is the son of Jolie Jesse and Dwayne Fishback. Tyler is the captain of the varsity basketball team, a member of King's Cross Church Youth Group, and assists with the future Wildcat Elementary Basketball League. He is undecided on where he's attending school, but will be studying biology and physical therapy. Mr. Tyler Fishback will be crowned by student body president, Kristen Paris. Ms. Leffert will be crowned by principal, Mike Landis. Her flowers will be presented by vice president, Reed Gabriel. Historian Hillary Huffer will represent her pen and sash. Congratulations to King Fishback and Queen Emma. Tyler will now bestow the traditional homecoming kiss.
ladies and gentlemen, this is the paint. Uh-oh. I just knocked the tree over. This is the paint doctor. I got the color wheel. Now, you know what a color wheel is? It is the wheel that the paint works where you pick all your colors to paint your room. It could be a multicolored beard. It could be a underarm fan. You never can tell. One thing we do know is that it's time to paint. You know, you can make your wife very happy if you go to your house and paint some rooms or you paint you paint the outside of the house, the inside of the house. It makes them very feel very good because you work hard for them and they like that. All women like to see their man sweat. You know, they do, they do. Honeydew is what they do. And you get to do it too. So you go to the paint works at 1960 North Washington Street and you see David, David Eichenen over there and he's the real paint doctor. He fix you up with color. It's so nice when the color is right. Go to Paintworks today. Martin Senor. See, Martin C. Nor. Right there. Martin Senor at, at the Paintworks. Bye, and we see you next time. Ah, I'm burning up. it takes to respect our customers homes just one more way charter is obsessed with serving you better all right folks this is uh, a video clip here about the NFL players lip syncing something it's funny watch it how you feeling? Uh, egg roll. I wish I had a breeze running down my leg. I'd kill for a cookie. Sting Ray, a double-sided Scooby snack. Yeah, we pick our hotel. Help me burn that old man. I can't, yes, dude. Yes, you can. Let's freaking burn that guy. Hit him on the eyeball. Hey, don't offend me. Can I have this sloth? A skunk. I, mean, I can't believe there's a manhole and he fell in it. I want it now! I want cake now! I, I want it now! I found Fido! Hey, I found Fido! I found Fido, you guys! Stank! Ham bowl! Hmm? Hey, I'd love to get you a Mai Tai. Yeah, come on, I'll make it myself. Um, Is that a bother? What's wrong with him? Ooh, I'm white! Stop doing heroin! I dare you to spit in that guy's drink. I went out with a girl this weekend. We just kept having a ball. Then I come over to hang out after the game and it's just, the floor's just bean bags. So that's when I'm a jerk to her because I'm all, you can pick up all your floor bags. You ain't living in Southeast Asia. You gotta make a 45 degree like this. Use froggy voice when you eat old fruit salad. Mm -hmm. I encompass and I eclipse. Yeah. Got the hiccups. The vet said, dude, he said, your cat's just pregnant. I said, okay, so I won't go and kick her. Pretty female parts. You took three chomps and then threw your hot dog up over here. I got 13 steaks over here. Dude, I'll have your money. You better. I mean, you could buy a pregnant cow. I and mean, I showed you that girl's pictures, right? Look, I brought you a potion and it's gonna work great because it'll make you run. And you brought your potion, right? You're dead to me. I'd fight for this man. He's got a Frisbee. Breast lump. You got an orange peanut? Yeah. An orange peanut? Mm -hmm. For me? That's right. Oh, wow. An orange peanut? Well, I accept you. Finger time. I made some chicken rolls. Get me a fur at the fancy pawn shop and get a beard. Hold on, hold on. 
You've got to hear this. I know. How'd I get so lucky? Every call can be great when you're saving 35% or more. Join the millions who are already saving with Charter Phone. Smoking tobacco accounts for three of every ten fire deaths in the United States. Tullahoma Fire Department, Tullahoma Fire Department, need you en route to a structure fire, 202 Main Street, heavy smoke showing, neighbors advise child trapped inside. Lighters, matches, and associated smoking paraphernalia are the leading cause of preschooler fire deaths. We as firefighters know that most structure fires can be prevented. I've got one! I've got one! Command, this is primary search. We have a victim. Need EMS to meet us at the front door. Please help us to give you a fighting chance. This can be prevented. Contact the Tullahoma Fire Department for a free home safety inspection. All right, folks, we're back and uh, had a good show. It was a good show. Are you one of those, you're perfect people? There's not a thing not in the world change. perfect about me. <laughs> Does your wife want you to change? I think she's give up on me by this <laughs> stage of the game. Uh, it's been so all long. The been yeah. All the changes have been yeah. done. All the changes have been done. Men, men are, no, are not quite as impressionable after they've been married for 30 years yeah. as they might have been the first few years, you know. You can get them to do about anything at that point. Right, but, right. In the early stages. Well, I take that back. Maybe the first few years, depending on how old you are, if you're in your early 20s, you know, you might still be a little bit rebellious and occasionally get in trouble. You know, yeah. you you really mess up every now and then. And then then after maybe five or six years, you finally get to the point where you think it ain't worth it. And yeah. I'm, just, I'm just gonna do what she this said. Do what she said. Do what she said. <laughs> but then when you get a little bit older, in the, in the 20s and 30 years of marriage, you probably rebel every now and then. John does occasionally, I know. He, he says, <laughs> I'm not going to move. Two or three events today. I'm not going to the <laughs> ten you, you had me booked into. I'm just not going to uh, do it. Now, now, now. <laughs> so, uh, you guys do go, do a lot of uh, events. Y'all, 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 y'all get me in trouble right now. Brandon watches show does. She? Oh yeah. Oh my goodness, Brandon. Oh, yeah. I made that. I swear I made that up, Brandon. <laughs> Brandon watches. God watches. And, and Brandon knows there. that I have a tendency to embellish the, stories. Yeah, so, little little yeah. But, well, uh, but you have to embellish them to make them better for show business. You know. So. Oh. Yeah. Yeah, I Sometimes, mean, most, yeah. of, most of us, and, and it's like that, That I don't know if uh, I've read it on here, but, but uh, you know, you talk about country music and you talk about going out, and you, you know, guys going out and they drinking and they carousing and, and looking around and looking at strange women, and I'm thinking, you know, what's the sense in that? I wake up with a different woman every day. <laughs> <laughs> Sometimes I know she's got her reasons. I can't find the right thing to say. I try to do something special. Seems to turn out wrong because I wake up with a different woman every day. Some days are good. Some days are tough. Never know how it's going to go till the sun comes up. What, women, no need to roam and cheat with them wandering eyes. It'd be the same damn thing with a strange woman by you. <laughs> some days are good, some, some days, days are tough. Are and that's how it is, you know, that's how it is. Living, not just living with a woman, living, two people living together. Right. And through the years, you get to where you understand each other, and that's when your love grows deeper, because you do understand and uh, what's right and what's wrong, and you temper your, you temper your responses, you temper your reactions. Do you think John's a therapist? <laughs> well, it's a lot tougher being a man than you think because you know. I mean, you need to. You, you've got to. You, you've got to calculate what, what what the woman's thinking. You know, you're you're supposed to be able to read their mind, and and uh, you, you get better at that as time goes by. I guess you know. But Does that ever really happen? Though, can you ever really read a woman's mind? I doubt it. No. No. No, but, because what's good today is not good tomorrow. Right. Yeah. Right. It changes. Right. Wake up with a different, like I say, you wake up with, wake a, different up with a different every woman day. every day. Depends yeah. on what's That's going cute. on in her life. Depends on what attitude you know what? She, I and, really and liked she's taking around with her. poem you did the other night. The other night at the yeah, Diamond I've got that. Jubilee. I've got or, that. I'm going to share was, that. That was really nice. 
I'm going to share this. I've All been right. working on this for about eight years because I think it's a strong, strong, strong idea, and I just never could get it right. And I think I've finally gotten it right. After eight years? Yeah. I know all, well, you know, you can, you can work on them forever, but I know all of you, if you're like me and, and you're our age, and even when you're younger, you look in the mirror and you see what you want to see. Well, sometimes Cause, I cause do. Because there's, there's a hole in your mirror. Yeah. There's a hole in my mirror, the place where I can't see all the things that I don't like looking back at me. There's a hole in my mirror. I'm glad that it's there. I'm skinny, I'm happy, I'm suave and debonair. A smile that shines a mile and a head full of hair. There's a hole in my mirror and I'm glad that it's there. There's a hole in my mirror that swallows up the truth. The sadness in my eyes that I'm long in the tooth. No reflections of the times that I was less than cooth. There's a hole in my mirror that swallows up the truth. It shows me I've made it here without any pain. That everything is great, no need to complain, no memories of heartache, no tears, no regret. There's a hole in my mirror that helps me forget. No color, no gender, no prejudice or hate. The other cheek turned for a slap in the face. Where no one has to die for me to see the light. There's a hole in my mirror where everything is right. There's a hole in my mirror, what else can I say? As I leave and glance back to see my father walk away, there's a hole in my mirror. I say I love that. Good job. Mm -hmm. Because when I look in that mirror and see that 35 or 40 year old there, you know, mm -hmm. and then I'm, I'm, I'm walking away and I glance back and I'm going, Who, who's that? Because I'm looking in the hole, you yeah. know, you see yeah, in the mirror, hole what you are. Mirrors are kind like that and cameras that we encounter here on this, <laughs> on this, on this kind. they're not kind to us at all especially when, <laughs> when somebody shoots you in the ear and you think oh my god look at my yeah. double chin and that's <laughs> yeah, yeah that look at all that nose hair the, hanging the out secret, <laughs> right yeah, so. the secret of looking in the mirror is don't put on your glass <laughs> yeah, you yeah that's it hey folks we love y'all out there yeah, thank you do. for being have with us have a good us. week have a good week have fun and tell a home in the surrounding area there's all kinds of great things to do and until we see you next time be safe bye-bye